Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. Movie, well, it's not really a movie, is it? I suppose TV review. Have I done a TV review? I've done a couple of, well, what are we talking about? The Crown, yes. Series, is it five or is it series 55, which has just started on Netflix? And I've watched two episodes, so is it any good? What's it like? Should you maintain your Netflix subscription? Well, stick around and find out what Julian thinks. <sighs> the Crown, a what a family, what a family. There's skinny Diana mewling and puking through this loveless marriage. There's Philip, haughty, entitled, arrogant, racist, offensive, the ultimate gammon, before gammon was even invented, Princess Margaret, permanently tipsy, rude, bitter, bitingly offensive to any one of the little people who gets in her way, Camilla, oh Camilla, loitering, hovering constantly in the background like a fart at a funeral, ready to break out and find her niche. Charles, hand in his pocket, like a pocket Napoleon. A servant, constantly at his heels, hanging on his every move, shagging Camilla every chance he gets. He's like a, he's like a second string sub on the bench, Desperate for the throne. Please, please, Mr. Manager, put me on so I can score a goal. But the forward, yes, the forward constantly is there and he never gets his chance to grasp that throne until, of course, as we know now, he finally has it. Prince Edward, <laughs> so, so faint, so colourless. Not even this soap opera can find him a storyline. I mean, the thing about the crown is, uh, I mean, you've got these, these obsequious, driveling servants who hang on their every deathless word. You have these palaces the size of small towns, thousands of rooms. So these aristocrats can live out their pointless lives. It's... It's mawkish, it's self-pitying, it's pompous, it's self-important, it's boring, it's dull, because you have to ask yourself, who the fuck cares? I mean, is there anything about this useless family that anybody still wants to know? I mean, it's like, it's like a posh version of EastEnders. Let's call it WestEnders. And the thing is, right, in EastEnders, they have storylines, you know, they, the things happen. But what happens in this? So somebody says, oh, your majesty, or, or somebody says, oh, your highness, or uh, the, the Prince Philip goes uh, carriage driving with some lady. I mean, why would you care? The other thing about it is, occasionally a character comes along, like Andrew Morton, you know, who writes his book about Diana, and somebody says to him, ah, Andrew Morton, I believe, oh, you want to write a book about Diana. So you think, ah, yes, I know who that is. And sometimes a character comes across, John Major, for example, who's got glasses, as John Major did, who's got kind of silver hair, as John Major did, who's apart from that kind of colourless and boring. And you think, ah, yes, they say, Mr. Prime Minister, so I know that's John Major. So most of the people, you kind of know who they are, but unless you're, unless you're so engaged in this kind of tabloid shite, you don't know who these people are and you couldn't care less, right? You couldn't care less. There is a go-between through and between Andrew Morton and Princess Diana when she's writing, when he's writing this book, or she's writing this book, my story it was called, who I assume, maybe wrongly, is James Hewitt, but she never calls him by name. 
Nobody ever calls him James Hewitt. So it may not be James Hewitt at all. It may be something completely different. Now, if it's James Hewitt, they don't hint, at least I've seen two episodes, they don't hint at an affair. They seem to be close friends, but they don't hint at an affair. So maybe it's not James Hewitt. But if it isn't James Hewitt, who is it? Now, of course, it may be that it's nobody at all. And I know that, you know, people have said about the crown, what John Major said about the crown. Actually, I don't know what John Major said about the crown. But what he's probably said is they made stuff up. Well, if they, my, my view, my view always is about, you know, Towie and Made in Chelsea and stuff like this. If it's scripted, why isn't it better? All right. So if they've made all this stuff up, why haven't they done it better? Why is it just un utterably dreary and it, it's kind of it's so it's so petty bourgeois do you know what I mean it's like can you can you use that phrase in this day and age you remember that you remember Ernest Hemingway says that Scott Fitzgerald said to him the rich are different and, and Hemingway said yes I know they've got more money well it, it's like it's like somebody who said oh the royals are different and some say, oh, yes, they are different. And then some and Hemingway comes across and said, well, no, they're not. You know, they're just, they've just got more money. But they're not, re they're not interesting. Having money, right, doesn't make you interesting, okay? You know, big, big, uh, uh, what's the word, big light bulb moment there, guys. Being royal doesn't make you interesting, okay? Just because you're the son or the daughter of a monarch who can trace their line back to fucking commute, commute. I almost said commute there, uh, to commute. It doesn't make you interesting. It doesn't make your life interesting. Why do people care, right? Why do people care about this family? And why do people continue to care about this family? They are a soap opera that if nobody would make, right? Nobody would make a second series of this soap opera, right? You remember... You remember El Dorado, 20, 30 years or whatever it was. They thought they'd make an EastEnders on the Spanish Costa Brava. And it was dreadful, absolutely dreadful. I actually quite enjoyed it, actually. I thought it was, it was so bad, it was funny. But they never made a second series. Or if they did, they never made a third series because it was so terrible. And this royal family, you think, why would you make? Why haven't they died out? You know, why, why, don't, they, why don't they stop producing progeny? So the whole fucking lot of them can die out and then we can move on to some better system of running the country. So the crown, oh, it's dreadful. I mean, there is there is billions spent on this crown. There, there are oodles, there are armies of extras. There is CGI to make your eyes water. There is costumes galore. There is sets they've spent a fortune on. they burnt through more money making this series than the royal family spends in about three weeks. And you think, for what? For what? Okay, what have you got at the end of it? I know it's popular. And you're going to say, well, Julian, you watched it. Well, we just finished the second episode, me and my wife. And my wife said to me, you know, I don't think I'll watch any more of this. You know, I've, I've, we've seen it all before. You know, this has all been played out. There's nothing new here. And what there is that's new, which they've made up, is not particularly interesting. So if you want to see right, uh, a great program about not, not a royal family, but a kind of powerful family, you know, watch Succession, all right? Because in Succession, right, they, they create a story, they create characters, they create interesting characters, not dull characters like, like Princess Margaret, you know, the, the, and the apotheosis of somebody who's got nothing to do. And the other thing about the crown is nobody does any fucking work, right? None of them. Now you'll just say, oh, well, they do thousands of days for charity. Well, I'm sure they do, but turning up and uh, making a speech at the Milk Marketing Board, that is not work. Guys, uh, you, you know what you know what Bill, Bill Shankly said about football. You know, it's not going down the mines. I mean, these people—they're not working. All they do is spend money. All they do is spend. And, and if you've got if you've got nothing to do in your life, right? If you've got if you've got no work, if you've got nothing, if you've got nothing interesting going on, you've got nothing to do better to do than have affairs and piss people off and get on everybody's nerves and take make take the Mickey out of your servants. I haven't even mentioned Princess Anne. Oh, Princess Anne, you know, making eyes at an equerry. What the fuck is an equerry? I mean, whoever, whoever goes to careers classes at school and the careers master says, what do you want to be when you grow up, son or, or young lady? And you say, I want to be an equerry. He's going to say, 
what the fuck is an aquarium? I mean, I don't know. Anyway, she's 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 got these binoculars and she sees Captain Tim, or whoever his name is, who's an aquarium. And you can obviously see she's desperate to shag him, and obviously she does. So you don't you don't know who he is, but you kind of know who he is. Do you know what I mean? You kind of work it out. So am I going to carry on watching? <laughs> hell yeah, hell yeah, I'm going to carry on watching it just to annoy you lot and just to annoy my wife and just because I want to see. Yes, I want them to recreate. I want them to, to build a whole new Paris or Pinewood Studios or whatever it is that Netflix is filmed. And I want them to do a whole, you know, I want them to rebuild the, the south of France at uh, uh, Boreham Wood or, wh or wherever it is. They're going to have thousands of miles of recreated beaches so that we can see, you know, Diana on the boat with, um, uh, what's his name, Al Fayed, and then getting in the car and going down into the tunnel and then boof! <laughs> and that'll be the end of, I don't know, episode five or six, I suppose. But then we're going to have to, I suppose, have a series six, aren't we? So um, anyway, The Crown, forget it. Succession, yeah. Go and watch Succession. That's brilliant. Thanks for watching. See you next time.